Okay, so next is a fish curry. And again, you we're taking it up a little bit of a level now in the uh, preparation phase. And it's still simple if you've got the time to invest in going down to the supermarket and looking at spices. So you can use a curry powder, which you can buy anywhere, but sometimes I find these a little too harsh, too strong and overpowering for fish. Um, what I've got today is this, coriander, ground, just a simple jar, paprika, turmeric, cumin, star anise, and a little bit, a few spices to kick the thing off with. And what I've got here is a piece of cinnamon, two bay leaves, and some black mustard seeds. And black mustard seeds you can buy in a good Indian shop, Asian shop, look like this. And you get a pestle of mortar and you grind them, which I've done here, and you end up with that. So that's all it is. So don't, it's, it, again, we're not, it, it's still simple. I've got a wok here heating up. And now for the spices. Now, look, we're, we're back into the weights and measures game, aren't we? How much do we need of each thing? And this is how I do it. Incredibly sophisticated, so please take note of this. I take the cap and I take the ingredients and I do that. And that's roughly how much anise I want because it's a very, it can, it can overpower the fish, number one. The same thing with the ground cumin. I can go a little bit more now, and I can go maybe half a cap. Turmeric, not so much because that's more of a colouring, it, it gives a good flavour. It must be very healthy for you as well. That's a bit too much. So again, you can experiment with this, just don't put too much in. And start. You can, and you can play with the recipes as you go along. So that's my sophisticated method of teaspoons and measuring spices. Now, have I missed one? No, cumin paprika. No. Now, you can put chili powder in, but I wouldn't recommend that with fish because the fish flavour is nice and delicate. So chili powder can over, overpower this. But if you want to add chili powder, add whatever you want to right now. Now, here one onion which I'm going to, and, and some chopped garlic now, or crushed garlic, thanks to my little friend here. About four or five cloves, again, whatever you want. Take the onion, slice. Now, I slice these onions this way for a very good reason. My Malaysian Chinese friend, Mr. Stephen Chang, nearly took my head off for slicing them the other way because he thought, in his wisdom, that it would affect the flavour of the food. The choice is yours. So I've now been converted. It's now instilled that I have to slice the onion this way. Normally I would just chop it that way. But anyway, that's where we are. So the wok is hot and we do... This has to happen very quickly now because what we don't want... The, the secret of the... Um, oh, sorry, one last ingredient. And this is where the fat comes in. Coconut milk. Please do not buy the fat-free version, it's pointless. Okay? This is high fat, low carb. So the fish, whilst it's extremely low in fat, we balance this with the coconut milk to give it the fat, um, the fat content. Now, the fish itself. White fish, tilapia. Now, looking around the supermarket, you've got halibut, you've got cod. You can spend $17, $18 a pound for this fish where you can spend around five to six. I'm all about you know, keeping the cost down where there's no real justification for spending more. This is a curry. It's going to be a nice fish flavour, whichever way you look at it. If you want to go the extra mile and put in halibut or anything like that, be my guest. But for me, it's simple. The fish holds up well when you cook it and you get a very nice flavour. But the most important thing with a fish curry, as opposed to say a chicken or a lamb curry, is that we make the sauce first. Because the fish cooks in minutes. And what we do is we start with this blend here and very quickly we add this and then we add the onion. So if we come over here, we put some oil. You can see the wok is starting to smoke and that's where the oil from the previous cooking is burning, burning off. So we've got some oil there, peanut oil again. 
Please do not use olive oil. I hear people with olive oil for curry recipes. It doesn't work. The flavour is too strong and the oil can go rancid very quickly. So we need a good heat in this now. And you, can, you, can, you can see that just by looking at it. The pan's been on for a while. It's getting nice and hot. And we want to basically put these in and hear a crackle. When we hear a crackle, we immediately add then these spices. And then straight in we add the onions. And the onions, because they're cool, and the garlic goes in last because we want it to burn. But the onions then will cool down the whole mixture. And if necessary, and I have something ready, there's a little bit of water, cold water this time, and if it gets too hot and it burns, the spices are no good. Then you have to start again. So the idea is to cook the flavour out of the spices, but not burn them, because then you, you end up with a, a complete mess. So in with this, here a little crackle. Yeah, so that's the mustard seed and the lady of cooking. Straight in with the herb, the spices, and the onions. I'm keeping the garlic back. Quickly get my spoon and start mixing that. Now, you can, those of you in here can smell this. Can you smell that yeah. spice flavour? We, want to, we don't want it to burn, and we just want to cook this gently from this point. You can smell it, you can smell the flavours now, okay? So this is it, this is just the base. And again, if you're prepared to do the invest, or to, you know, do the groundwork and buy your spices, alternatively, look, this is a great um, Vietnamese curry powder, actually. Excellent flavour, but I'll show you that way, then this way is even easier. So if you're using this, probably about a dessert spoonful for what we're doing here. Then you can taste it, you can see how it goes. If you want more flavour, add more flavour. But um, the trick now is to keep it moving, because we don't want the spices to stick. And if they do, add a little water, that will cool the pan down. Just about. So we'll put the garlic in in a minute, and it will stay there. That's, that will cook quickly. Burnt garlic is not a very nice taste. That's cooking nicely, and I hope you can really smell this. Yeah. Yeah. And notice I haven't added any salt or pepper, because the salt we'll add at the end, because we'll see where, the, where it is. Right. The pepper we may not need, <clears throat> because we have enough flavour in the in the curry. So now what we're going to do is just gently cook that garlic. And then we add some water to that and we let it simmer for about 30 minutes because that's the basis of the sauce. Because what we're going to do then is we're going to put, now this fish is frozen because it's a lot easier to buy frozen fish than it is to go to your fish market and buy fresh fish every day. Some days I don't deliver and sometimes it can be a nightmare. This is, you can see it in most supermarkets, it's, it's frozen fish. Um, I've always used it, great quality for me. Unless I'm using fish for a, a special occasion, or if I'm doing a, a certain steamed Asian dish, I'll, I'll go out and buy fresh fish. But for curries, that's the easiest one. I think it's called Pacific something. You'll see it's in a blue wrapping. They do everything, they do tuna, they do salmon. So that's the best fish to get for this, because it's easy. So now I've added the water in here, and just enough to cover that sauce, I'm going to add a little bit more, and this will just allow the flavours now and the spices to cook. Okay, before we move on, one critical point to make here, in that nobody really wants to cook and do all this work without some form of uh, natural lubrication, and given the two choices here, my two favourites, beer and wine, eight grams of sugar, roughly, maybe a little more. And I think about one to two, so this is the preferred drink, but this is for the thirsty work in the kitchen. Now, slight change of direction with our um, curry, in that I have to find some green beans here, and we can just simply take some of these green beans, put it into the curry sauce, which has been going on now for about 30 minutes. So all those flavours have started to... Um, cook and the liquid now. It's just water by the way because we're going to put the coconut milk in the end. Now what you can also do with a fish curry like this 
is put some potato in it. Now the average potato, I think medium size, is about 25 grams of sugar. So you have to factor that in. So you could quite easily put in one, two potatoes, that's 50 grams. And then you have to be careful how much you eat. So I'm just going to put some beans in here. And again, you've got to get used to the carb content, so let's have a look. Um, does it tell me? Six grams per three quarters of a cup, four servings in here. So 24 grams of sugar in that. Not a lot. That's why, you know, yeah, okay, you can eat table sugar and you can have your candy bars for your carb sources, but you're going to have to eat a lot less of that than you are the green beans I'm putting in here. So these will take, these will probably cook, a lot, the fish will cook quicker than the beans, so that's why I'm putting the beans in first. So I'm just going to get them cooking a little bit, turn the heat up because we've just reduced the temperature by adding a new ingredient. You just let them cook a little. So the beans are coming up now to cooking. And you can see again, it looks, it looks a lot more appetising with a bit of green vegetables in there, whether you're on a carb diet or not. Now if you're serving this for the family, steamed rice, get yourself a rice cooker, they're worth every uh, cent of the investment. You just measure out the water, wash the rice, put it in and you're done. So the hard way of course is trying to cook it and evaporate it all the water and get it soft. But again, this with rice, again look at the carb counts of the rice, work out how much you're going to have. Maybe one little bowl is enough for you, could be that size. That's about what I have, that much rice if I'm having any form of curry. In the early days, I must say, and we were talking about this earlier, but being how strict, I wouldn't, I'd have curries with no rice, no potatoes, no bread, nothing. Right. So I've got to thank Mr. Ellis for taking me out of that.